my name is Ian Smith and I'm the laboratory supervisor in the chemistry department at Capilano University. The focus of this video is to provide information on the basic operation of the IR spectrometer, which you will use later in Chem 200 and throughout your labs in Chem 201. It's expected that you'll be familiar with the basic theory of IR spectrometry and interpretation of IR spectra before you actually use the instrumentation in the lab. Now, as you may already know from your lecture material, infrared spectrometry helps chemists to determine the functional groups present in a compound. It can, therefore, help in finding the structure of a compound. And together with other spectral and physical properties, this can ultimately lead to confirming the identity of a compound. The chemistry department owns two Fourier transform IR spectrometers, often just called FTIR. The first is a Perkin-Elmer Spectrum 1 FTIR, which we refer to as Spec 1. And the other is a Perkin-Elmer Spectrum 2 FTIR, which we refer to as Spec 2. Each instrument is capable of obtaining information about infrared radiation at all frequencies simultaneously as the radiation is passed through the sample. This diagram shows the basics of how we obtain infrared spectra using an FTIR spectrometer. A beam of infrared radiation is directed into a part of the spectrometer called the interferometer. The interferometer consists of a beam splitter and a pair of mirrors at right angles to each other. This produces what's called an interferogram, which stores information about the IR radiation at all frequencies simultaneously. When the radiation arrives at the sample, some frequencies are absorbed by the sample and some are allowed to pass or be transmitted through the sample. When the transmitted radiation arrives at the detector, Information about that radiation is decoded using a mathematical technique called a Fourier transformation. This provides information about the intensity of transmitted infrared radiation at each frequency separately. The computer software then produces a graph of percentage transmission against frequency or wave number. And this graph, called the IR spectrum of the sample, is what the chemist interprets. Here we see a spectrum being collected on one of our FTIRs. We can see that some frequencies are absorbed more than others, depending upon which bonds or functional groups are present in the sample. Spec1 is equipped with an ATR module, ATR meaning attenuated total reflectance. The ATR is used to obtain spectra of liquid and solid samples, and you can refer to your lab manual for more information on the ATR. But for now, the ATR consists of a diamond crystal in the centre of this circular mounting plate. The liquid or solid sample is placed over the surface of the crystal, and the IR beam is directed from below into the sample to a depth of only 1 to 2 micrometers. SPEC2 is equipped to obtain spectra via what we call IR transmission. Again, you can read about this in your lab manual. As far as your labs are concerned, you'll use SPEC2 to obtain IR spectra of liquids only. A very small amount of the liquid is held between two sodium chloride plates within a demountable cell, and the cell is placed in position inside the sample compartment. This allows a sample to be positioned so that the IR beam can be directed towards it. So now let's take a closer look at how we prepare both liquids, solids and IR spectrometry. Lauren here is going to first obtain the IR spectrum of a solid, in this case benzoin, using the ATR on spec 1. The computer which controls the IR spectrometer will be switched on and the software, called Spectrum, will be up and running. If it's not, consult your lab supervisor or the lab technician. From here on, it's a fairly simple matter of following the on-screen prompts. Once you've instructed the instrument to obtain the spectrum of a solid, a prompt appears to tell you that the instrument may first request a background scan. If this is needed, the instrument will collect and store an IR spectrum of air. Since your sample is being run in air, in this way, the instrument can subtract the spectrum of air from the spectrum of your sample run in air. 
Generally, the instrument will call for a background spectrum only when software is started up. So if someone else has used the instrument recently, it will use the already stored background spectrum. Just follow the on-screen prompt. Assuming that the background spectrum has already been stored, you will then be prompted to scan your sample. Using a spatula, a small amount of the solid sample is added to the mounting plate so as to cover the exposed surface of the crystal. The pressure arm is swung over the top of the sample and the knob rotated until it just touches the sample. When you click on the scan icon, you should rotate the pressure arm knob again, this time until the force gauge indicates a pressure of between 100 and 130. The force gauge is visible as a green bar at the bottom of the screen, which shows the spectrum being collected. In most cases, the spectrometer will scan the sample four times, which takes just a few seconds, and then displays the average result of the four scans in the screen. The software displays the spectrum and labels the frequency value for all major peaks. Again, follow the prompts to print a hard copy of the spectrum. While printing is being processed, you'll be prompted to remove your sample and clean the mounting plate and crystal with an alcohol moistened tissue. And now the spectrum can be collected from the printer. Details about the sample and instrumental parameters can be entered in the tables provided on the hard copy of the spectrum. Scanning a liquid sample with the ATR is very much the same as a solid. First press the liquid scan icon. A few drops of liquid are then placed over the ATR crystal and the pressure arm is rotated so that it just touches the sample. No additional pressure is needed with liquid since there is good contact between the crystal and the liquid, but we still place the pressure arm over the top of the sample in this way so as to prevent or slow down evaporation of more volatile liquids from the surface of the crystal. Everything is the same as that for a solid sample, except no pressure is used with the liquid. The spectrum is obtained and printed out as usual, and cleanup is the same as it is for solids. Use an alcohol moistened tissue to clean the surface of the crystal and mounting plate. And again, hard copy of the spectrum is obtained from the printer. Here we see Spectrum 2, which you will use only to obtain IR spectra of liquids. Although we could also utilize a solid sampling method with Spec 2, it will be used only for collection of liquid spectra. Now, as was the case with Spectrum 1, the instrument should be on and the computer software up and running. If this is not the case, see your lab supervisor or the lab technician. For convenience sake, the basic instructions for obtaining a spectrum on this instrument are posted nearby. But first we need to prepare the liquid for spectroscopy. The equipment we need to do this is contained in a desiccator. We use a demountable cell and a set of polished sodium chloride plates. The cell is disassembled. and the sodium chloride plates are removed from their container, handling carefully only by the outer edges. One plate is placed inside the cell, and a drop of liquid is placed in the center of the plate. The other plate is then placed on top of the liquid and this cell reassembled. So we have a thin film of liquid between the two inner surfaces of the plates. We're now ready to obtain the IR spectrum of the liquid. 
Now, in most cases, the graph area of the spectrum window will show a spectrum of a sample from a previous user of the instrument. The graph area is cleared. A check is made to ensure that the sample compartment is clear. Then the background icon is selected so that air will be scanned into the background. The instrument then collects a spectrum of the background which will appear momentarily and then disappear to leave the graph area clear. The demountable cell containing the liquid sample is placed in the sample compartment. The scan icon is selected and the instrument will now collect the spectrum of the liquid sample. In a few seconds, the sample's IR spectrum will appear in the graph area of the screen. And notice that the absorption peaks are not labelled to indicate the position of frequency on the scale. Clicking on the labels icon causes the frequency position of the main spectral bands to be shown. And finally, by selecting the print icon, the spectrum is sent to the printer so that we can obtain a hard copy. The demountable cell is removed from the sample compartment, disassembled, and the sodium chloride plates are cleaned with acetone. Once cleaned, they are wiped dry and returned to the storage container. The pieces of the demountable cell are reassembled and together with the sodium chloride plates return to the desiccator. I hope this video has allowed you to gain some insight into the IR spectrometer and how it's used. Remember that complete instructions on the use of each of our spectrometers together with instructions on sample preparation are in section 2, the technique section of your lab manual. Also in your lab manual are complete details on how to interpret your infrared spectra and therefore determine or confirm the functional groups present in your sample. When you first use the IR spectrometers, your instructor will review their use with you, so by watching this video, you'll have a bit of a jump start and be more familiar with their operation. Thank you for watching, and for more instructional videos, check out capuchem.ca slash labs or check out our YouTube channel, Capilano U Chem Lab.